In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss how you can use the constructor patches that are available in some of our libraries that use the eDNA engine, such as eDNA Earth. Before we get started, it's worth noting that you need the full version of Contact in order to access this feature, which is available via Native Instruments. The first thing that we should do is go to the Advanced folder, where you'll find the Construction Kit folder here. Here we've got six options, which have different effects attached to them, as well as tempo synced options for samples that use a specific tempo. The first thing that we need to do is click on the wrench icon here, which takes us to the back end of contact. If we now click on the expert tab, you'll see that we have the groups listed here. Within the mapping editor, which is already open, this is where we're going to place our samples. Here are some synthesizer samples that I've created earlier, and I'm simply gonna highlight all of these and drag and drop them into the mapping editor. Because I've dragged and dropped them randomly, they won't be associated to the correct note. So I need to go to the edit drop down here, select auto map setup, where we can define how our samples are mapped. You can see that as I've labeled my samples with this type of wave that they use, as well as the note, contact recognizes the note name here. And from this menu, we can select set to a single key. We can then apply, and then we can select from the drop down, make root key. This makes the root key of the sample correct within contact, which means all your samples will be correctly tuned. Back in the mapping editor, if we now highlight all our samples again, and then drag the main highlighted sample down, we can spread all of our samples across the whole range of the keyboard. If you want to extend the range further, we can also drag the bottom sample down and drag the top sample back up to your desired range. The last thing that we need to do is make sure that the sample loops correctly. If we highlight all and then navigate down to the wave editor here, which can be opened from this menu, we need to then power on the sample loop function. You'll see that we now have a bunch of loops available, but we only really need one so we can deselect all of the other loops that have been created here. From the loop one here, we can then define when the loop will start, when the loop will end, and when the crossfade will happen if the endpoint is slightly before where the sample would restart. Now I've only changed the loop for one sample, but as I've recorded all of these samples in exactly the same way, I can now go to the menu here, go to the all selected zones drop down, and then select copy current zones loop settings. Select OK. And after a bit of waiting, you'll now see that each sample that we've loaded within this group has exactly the same loop point. If we want to create a second layer, it's possible to do that by selecting example layer two group. I'll now use the triangular waves that I've recorded previously, and I'll load these in exactly the same way as I did for the first group. Drop them into the mapping editor, go to the edit menu, select auto map, select set to single key, apply, and then select make root note key and apply this before closing the menu and then dragging the samples across so the keys match. I'm then gonna also drag and drop the lowest and highest key, so I've got a larger range. As before, the last thing that we need to do is to make sure that our samples loop if you want to use pads and long held down notes. So again, I'm gonna deselect the multiple loop points that are automatically created and then I'm going to enable the first loop, change the start point and the end point, and then create a long crossfade in between. Again, the final thing to do is make sure that all the samples are highlighted, go to all selected zones, and then copy current zones loop settings. Now we've successfully imported our samples into the eDNA engine, we can now close the contact backend by selecting the wrench icon again, where we can now start to interact with the eDNA interface. You'll see that by default, we've opened example layer one and example layer two, but if you're also using groups three and four, you can load these by selecting the folder and then selecting the different example layers here. 
There's loads of possibilities now with the eDNA interface and I won't cover them all in this tutorial but if you go to the eDNA Earth manual linked below you can read about what all the parameters on the interface do. First, if we move the oscillator over to the left hand side we'll just hear the example layer 1 which is our saw waves. And if we move this completely over to the right you will hear example layer 2 which is our triangular waves. We can now set about editing the attack Decay, Sustain and Release. And we can also make use of the Oscillate Mixer, which will then mix between the two groups at the specific speed that we select. We can also make use of the gate sequencer, which means that we can arpeggiate between the different groups. We can also vary the speed of this. And if we go back to the top menu here, we can use the high pass and the low pass filters to create more of a balance between the groups. Lastly, we can go to the effects and motor option here to have a look at what effects are available. We can apply these to both sets of instruments using the master effects or we can apply specific effects to different bays. When choosing effects, I recommend deselecting the gate sequencer and then pulling the oscillation mixer over so you can edit one sample at a time. We're now editing bay A, which is our saw wave. To enable an effect, make sure that you select the red box underneath the effects name. And if you want this effect to appear on the main interface so that you can automate it, you can select the fave button here and then select attach to dashboard. Now when we go back to the mixer and sequencer, you'll see that we have the drive for section A of the eDNA interface. So let's select a different effect for the second group. We need to select Bay B and this time I'm going to use saturation and enable it by selecting the red box underneath. Again I can fade this to attach it to the dashboard and I'm also going to attach a phaser just to add a different depth. We can switch this on and off with the wet signal at the end here. So I'm going to attach this to the mixer and sequencer as well so I've got more control. Now I've got all the effects that I'm using available in the effects dashboard. And if I want to attach these to certain MIDI CC numbers so I can control it on my MIDI interface, I can do so by holding down control on my keyboard, clicking and then selecting learn MIDI CC. Or alternatively we can go to the automation tab here and then select a MIDI CC that's not assigned and then simply drag this over any of the effects that we have loaded in the effects dash. Finally, you can see that we're peaking contact here. So we can turn down the master volume just below and we're going to turn this down to about minus 6 dB. If you want to fine tune this, simply hold down the shift button where you can fine tune it to a specific level. And we can also trim the individual samples in this option here. The last thing that you'll want to do is to make sure that you save your patch. So the first thing to do is to rename the creator patch. Once you've renamed your patch, select the floppy disk icon and then select save as, select the instrument name. And then I recommend saving this inside your constructions kit folder. 
you'll need to make sure that you save the patch in the samples because if you only save the patch then the samples won't necessarily load if you use this on a different computer. Once you're happy with everything and happy with the name, select save. And if we navigate back to the libraries tab, reload the constructors kit folder, you'll see that our custom synth is now available to drag and drop and load into contact. Thanks for watching Spitfire Clips. Let us know if it was too long, too short, too fast or too slow in the comments down below. Hit like if we answered your question and subscribe for more clips, tips, tricks and exclusive Spitfire content.